Hey everyone, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com and this video really is going to be a lot different to our norm. Generally when you see us build a system it'll be through use of a time lapse where we do everything really really quickly and just sort of show you guys you know what the scenario is for how easy a particular chassis is to build in. This one though is going to be a bit different because essentially what we have here is us building a system for under a certain price point. As the title suggests it's going to be under 400 pounds in dollars it's probably going to be around 500 dollars but that is at the time of filming this obviously it's going to change every single day so firstly i guess the whole point of this well the whole point of us actually building this system as you can see all of the components here is generally down to the price of graphics cards at the moment for anyone who's actually in the market for buying a system either pre-built or building their own you're going to struggle when it comes to actually buying a graphics card because the prices of them are just so inflated. I mean, the 1080 Ti once upon a time was sort of five, no, 650 pounds, 700 pounds. You're now in some places talking over a thousand pounds. Dollars is exactly the same. You're talking sort of sometimes up to about $1,200 in the US. And I actually really feel sorry for you guys. So what I thought I'd do is team up with our friends at AMD, AeroCall, ADATA, and ASRock, and actually build a system that we believe can play games at a playable frame rate. I'm talking 30 frames per second, Sorry fans, but you're not going to get the 60 frames per second without a graphics card on this build. But 30 frames per second with this system for under £400. So let's talk through what we've got. I guess first up is going to be the thing that houses it. We're talking about the AeroCall SI5101 Advanced. This is just a mid-tower chassis, really affordable, coming in at around £30 in the UK. Also coupled with that is the AeroCall Integrator 400 Watt. Uh, this is an 80 plus power supply. It's going to do exactly what it says on the tin. Don't expect anything, you know, over the top. We're talking simplicity here. And essentially that's going to give us stable voltages. It's going to give us clean power and it's affordable again, $29.99. So CPU wise, this is essentially the heart of the build. We're talking about the new Ryzen 3 2200G. So this is a four core, four thread processor. It comes with a CPU cooler as well. So we're not gonna have to plump out extra money on extra sort of, you know, components and materials that we don't necessarily need. Even down to the thermal paste. If you were gonna get a, a little sort of syringe of Noctua paste, it's gonna set you back six to eight pounds. With this, no problem, because obviously it's on the heatsink. To house that CPU, or should I say APU, because it is an accelerated processing unit, you're finding that it's got the graphics built into it. So with that, we need a motherboard that's going to be up for the bill as well. So we went with the ASRock AB350M HDV. This is literally the most affordable B350 motherboard on the planet. So this comes in on Amazon at the moment and all the prices for all of these components will be below in the description, but you'll find this comes in at around 55 to 60 pounds. So again, it's keeping price paramount essentially. Uh, with this, obviously you can get an A320 motherboard, but you're not gonna be able to overclock. And things like the new APU, you're gonna to want to overclock and push as far as you can so that you can get the most performance on from the CPU side as well as the Vega graphics, because this has eight Vega cores built into it. So obviously X370, we could have got above, but then you're talking more money for essentially features that we're not necessarily gonna need for this. Once again, we're talking 720p gaming, 30 frames per second in most reasonable titles, all for under 400 pound. Storage wise, now this was an interesting one. Initially, we were just gonna go with a hard drive. So we're talking the Western Digital one terabyte uh, WD Blue. It's a fantastic drive. It's gonna store all of your Steam games and everything on there. But then we decided we still had some money left over. So why not push the budget a little bit more? And we went with the ADATA XPG uh, SX6000, which right now, based on our own studies, is the most affordable M.2 NVMe SSD on the planet. So with this, I'm talking crazy speeds over a conventional SSD for not much money at all. 256 gig for about 76 pound at the time of researching into this. Fantastic value for money, and it's really gonna help sort of push the overall performance of the system. It's not gonna be a bottleneck or anything like that. Memory wise, for the average gamer, you don't need 32 gig, you don't even need 16 gig. We're gonna go with eight gig of ADATA XPG DDR4 2400. This is gonna be more than enough for the avid gamer. And because it is a single DIMM, it means that you're gonna have the ability to upgrade at a later date and potentially get higher capacity memory. So you could just get another eight gig stick, turn it into 16 gig if you find that you need it. But honestly speaking, eight gig is gonna be more than enough. All of this for 400 pounds. So like I said, this video is gonna be a little bit different. It's gonna be a little bit more long-winded than we normally have. 
but what you're going to find is us talking through step by step on exactly how to build the system so for anyone who's a novice who's looking into building their own system is a little bit kind of daunted by the fact of graphics costs costing so much money or even thinking that it's complicated to do hopefully this video is going to help you so let's get straight into it so guys, I guess we should get straight into it and start building the system. Uh, the first thing I actually want to do is dispel a few myths and also talk for a few tips and tricks along the way. Now, the first thing is, as you can see on the desk, there is no anti-static mat. I actually do have one made by Alpha Call. They sent it over, but generally you don't need one. And also you'll notice I actually have an Apple Watch on and not an anti-static wristband or anything like that. I'm not going to go up to a radiator and start caressing it. It's just something I've never done and luckily I've never had any problems with any components blowing up, ESD, anything like that. The only thing I would recommend is to have a good tool set. Now I use the word good kind of very loosely because I've had this kit quite a while and uh, as you can see it's actually kind of falling apart. But it serves me fine. So you can pick tool sets up like this for about 10, 15, 20 pounds off Amazon. Um, as you can see, I'm actually missing a screwdriver at somewhere else, but I do like to generally keep this pretty organized. Um, generally speaking, you're going to need a Phillips head. Uh, it's always handy to have these, which are just, you know, a combination of everything because some things have Allen key bolts, hex bolts, uh, Phillips, posi drive, flathead, and that way I can just kind of, you know, quickly get to them, pop it into the magnetic bit here and essentially use one tool for multiple things. So we're probably gonna go with that, to be honest. Now, putting that to sort of one side, I guess really we can just get straight into it. Now, I built my first computer when I was about 12 years old, and it, again, it was a little bit daunting at first, so I'm hoping I can kind of, you know, stop some of that coming through and, and sort of, you know, make you guys who are looking to go down this route just a little bit more confident with things. So, first and foremost, we're going to want to get the chassis outside of the cardboard box. So, I've got my trusty knife that you guys have probably seen in about a million different videos, and we are going to open this up. For some reason, my cameraman thinks it's a good idea to zoom right in on this really janky knife that has tape and probably hair and fluff and all sorts on it. But there you go. So, if we open this up, I mean, there's a lot of things you can do when it comes to your buying decisions as to what kind of chassis you go for and so forth. Uh, as you saw earlier, we've got the ASRock AB350M HDV. Now, the M actually denotes that it's a micro ATX motherboard. Obviously, you can get mini ITX, but that would have made our budget go a little bit too high. Go figure. You go smaller, but for some reason, the price gets bigger. Or, obviously, you've got ATX. So just make sure when you're looking at it, you can see exactly if it's going to fit into your chassis. If it's an ATX chassis, you're going to be able to fit ATX, micro ATX, mini ITX. If it's a micro ATX chassis, you're only going to be able to fit micro ATX, mini ITX, and you won't be able to fit the full size ATX in there. Just little things like this, just do your research. You know, there's plenty of places on the internet where you can find all of this information, where you can Google it, you can go on forums, social media pages. Heck, head over to the Facebook, uh, our Facebook page, facebook.com slash eTechnics or our Twitter and you know, ask us, we'll give you some advice. Or if you are watching this on YouTube, then there's nothing stopping you, you know, just asking in the comments section. I will try to reply to as many people as I can. So always be warned, you might get a static shock because of the polystyrene. If you're gonna start rubbing it, you might get a static shock, but I've had it a few times. Right, taking the polystyrene off, you will find that generally chassis either come in polystyrene or some kind of foam. Honestly speaking, I do prefer the foam. It's, it doesn't break and go everywhere. Polystyrene is a bit, yeah. But once that's taken off, you'll have a bag that's actually around the chassis. So this is really just to protect the whole thing when it's in transit. Now, different chassis, depending on what you've gone for, will feel different, will weigh differently. Um, there'll be, yes, many, many different factors to it. This is a fairly, I don't want to say cheap, because cheap makes it sound nasty. It's an affordable chassis. So this is essentially what we've got. It's really light because it is using thinner materials, but it's perfect for someone who's just sort of getting into this whole kind of realm. Now, on the side, this is the bit that most of you guys love, the fact that when we peel this off and it makes that beautiful sort of sticky noise. I'm actually gonna leave it on there for now. Generally in our time lapses, we take this off. But for this particular video, I'm gonna leave it on there because we haven't got a mass amount of room here. We have got all these components kind of laid out. I don't wanna put this somewhere and find that it gets scratched. It is only kind of a plastic panel. You can get acrylic, you can get glass, tempered glass, you know, all this kind of stuff. But I don't want it to get damaged, so I'm gonna leave it like that. Now, any good chassis, and generally you're going to find a lot of the chassis manufacturers going down this route, they will have thumb screws actually holding in the side panel. 
So you'll find that on both side panels, generally, you'll have two thumb screws, and that just allows you to open this up. And as I say, cheaper chassis are gonna be kind of, you know, a lot thinner materials and things like that. So even trying to get this off is probably not gonna feel great compared to, you know, a 170 pound chassis. But it's gonna take a little work, slide it off, and then pull it out. And as you can see, we have got the sticky stuff on the other side as well, purely just for protection purposes. So I'm gonna leave this to one side because I'm not gonna need it until later on. Now, another thing that I actually advise, and I haven't got the one that I normally use here, so I'm gonna use the aqua tuning one, but always have a mug or a cup or a bowl or something to put your screws in, just so they don't go missing. So that way we know we've got our thumb screws in there. I'm gonna take the other side panel off as well, purely because it just allows us to work with the chassis a little bit easier. So we've got the third one, and then the fourth one. And then again, we can take off the side panel. I mean, this is really, really light. It's not the greatest quality, I've, I've said that, but you do get what you pay for. If you wanna go, you know, a little bit higher budget, you can do that. But I wanted to make this a point of making this whole system based on this video at under 400 pounds, affordable gaming. That way you're kind of comparing it essentially against consoles out there, the Xbox One X, the PS4. You know, once you're talking, getting the whole kit and caboodle for it, you're talking similar sort of money. Obviously games on PC are cheaper. PC Master Race. So inside you will find a few things. You may find a, a manual or a little guide or something. Obviously to keep costs down, they have just given us one piece of paper which just essentially shows us how things get installed on there. Uh, you can refer to that at any time. Another thing you'll find if we turn this around a little bit is you'll find some stuff cable tied together. So when we take the cable tie off, you'll see that we've got all of the relevant screws, a PCI bracket, sometimes there'd be cable ties, sometimes there'd be other accessories and then you'll get all of the front panel cables and connectors as well. So we'll get onto that in a minute. And that is essentially um, our chassis, kind of as bare bones, I guess, as it can physically get. Obviously, if you're working on a more complex chassis, you could be taking the front panel off and installing extra fans in or installing radiators, but we're not gonna do any of that today. We are keeping this nice and simple. So I'm gonna put that just to one side and we can come back to that in a bit because what I actually like to do is essentially take the core components and kind of build up as much as I can outside of the case before it actually comes to putting it in. So I guess really the next step for us is to look at our components, see what we've got and see what we can actually put in uh, and install outside of the chassis before we actually put it in. So guys, um, obviously component wise, we've got our power supply, which I'm again gonna put to one side. We don't need that quite yet. We have got our trusty screwdriver and all the various bits. Don't need the knife anymore because essentially everything's already been opened. So hard drive as well, we're not gonna need right now. I'm just trying to think of things that are gonna go onto the motherboard and going to sort of, you know, help us along the way. So we're talking M.2 SSD, our uh, one stick of memory, and then obviously we've got our um, Ryzen 3 2200G with Vega Graphics APU. So essentially what I like to do is I always like to do the M.2 drive first, purely because if you're gonna put the CPU and then the cooler in, sometimes you might find, depending on where the M.2 drive actually goes, there might be a slight problem as to sort of clearance issues. It's just easier to get that in there. So if we take the motherboard out, one thing you are gonna need is the rear IO uh, panel shield plate. So if we open that up, and that can go over there because we are gonna need that a little bit later. Uh, we are gonna need an SSD for our, hard, for our actual uh, internal hard drive. So obviously we've got an M.2 drive, so we don't need a SATA cable for that. So we literally need one for the hard drive. So we're all sorted there. Driver CD, never use them. Um, it's as simple as that. I'm still not quite sure why they actually provide them in. They should just have a, a little piece of paper that says, please go to the manufacturer's website and check all of the information there. Because they will be the latest drivers and everything on there. Now, we have the motherboard itself in an anti-static bag and generally there's a little bit of foam or something underneath just to kind of protect it when it's in transit. If we take that out, we don't need the foam and we don't need the anti-static bag. So we just take the motherboard out and that's essentially what we're left with. So if we put that down, hopefully you guys can get an idea as to you know how big the, uh, the board itself is and hopefully you can see kind of where everything's going to go. 
So as I said, we, we ended up getting one stick of memory. As you can see on this board, we have two memory slots. You can see that we've got the M.2 slot here. You can see that we've got room for a PCI Express card, such as a graphics card, if at a later date your budget permits. So, best way that I find is just to put the board on top of the box, that way you've got something a bit kind of solid to work with. Then we can look at, here's me saying that it's open, it's not, so trusty knife time. I ended up getting two of these, one for this build and then we are doing another build with the Ryzen 5 2400G which is going to be a little bit higher price point but it's going to give you 1080p gaming as opposed to 720p. So what we've got here is our M.2 drive, we can take that out and you can see they actually do bundle in a little XPG uh, kind of heatsink cover, um, they're not necessarily needed but you know there it is if you do want it. So we've got our M.2 drive. You will notice that where the M.2 drive actually goes, which is in here, there's a little bit here. And as you can see, we haven't got the screw. So we are gonna to have to take the board off and have a little look inside. There should be a very, very small bag inside with a screw. Hopefully they've included it. As you can see, in the bottom is our little screw. So this is actually going to help to lock the, uh, the M.2 drive down into place. So if we put everything back again, we can carry on from where we left off. I wish this was a bit like a cooking program, you know, here's one I made earlier, but I'm trying to keep it simple for you guys and to the point. So we need that little screw out of there. Now be careful because they are extremely small and they are very, very hard to lose. So with that screw, I know that I'm gonna need a pretty small Phillips um, head. So we're gonna go with a Phillips zero. And then what we can do is actually take our M.2 drive, line it up in the M.2 slot, push it in, and you'll sort of see or and hear a little click and push it down like that. Then we can get our screwdriver with our screw and I'm hoping that it still works magnetized, but it's probably not going to. No, it's not. So it's a matter of trying to line that up there, getting our screwdriver and screwing it down into place. Then if you want, you can obviously uh, put this little cover on there. So we might as well do it. Adds a little bit of style, I guess. So obviously the board is going to be sitting kind of this way up in our in our system, so it makes sense to kind of you know get this all lined up. And you can see there is actually a little cut out here just for that screw. And put that down, and it just sticks into place. Got to admit it looks a bit nicer than just having the bare PCB. So thanks to A Data for firstly you know sending this stuff as well. Uh, I've got to admit there are some really boring looking M.2 drives out there, so it's nice to see one that's just a little bit nicer looking. Um, so yeah, there we go. So that is kind of the first step. As I say, with some coolers, you can see how close the M.2 slot is to this actual kind of cooler retention bracket. So sometimes it's just a bit easier to put that in first. Next up, we're gonna go with the actual CPU itself, or in this case, APU, so accelerated processing unit. No different to a CPU in terms of physical form factor or anything like that. You can see exactly what it looks like, but it does mean that it has got Vega graphics and everything built into it. So essentially, you do get a little sticker with it as well, just in case you want to put that on the uh, on the outside of your case. I'm not a massive fan of stickers, so I'm going to leave that out. But it comes in a little clamshell packaging. You can just open it up like that and take the processor out. Now, you want to be careful because on AMD processors, you do get all the pins actually on the processor themselves. If it was an Intel system, the pins would actually be on the socket. Now, I'm going to show you exactly, and there's tons of videos out there showing you this, so you know if you've seen it before, just watch it again or skip past this bit. But essentially I'm gonna show you how to install it and how to install it correctly. So this is the actual socket itself. Obviously you wanna make sure that your motherboard is compatible with the processor, yada, yada, yada. Then it, you can see it's got like this little arm on there. So you essentially pull the arm out, so it unlatches and just pull it up. And you will see kind of the pins uh, being exposed as to sort of the pin sockets being exposed. So if we open it up, you can see just on this corner there's like a little kind of arrow compared to the other one. You can see no arrows, on this one there's a little arrow. And then on the APU itself, again you can see there's a little arrow. So all we've got to do is line that up and you'll see that it drops into place. Just make sure it's down, push this down, 
and it clips back in. And that essentially is your processor installed, nice and easy. Now, the next step is to take the cooler. Now, there are various different types of coolers out there. You can probably see that we've got our AIO type coolers, we've got our Notua coolers or the Chromax stuff. There's various different coolers. The stock cooler that AMD actually give you is absolutely fantastic. I've, I've got to be honest, for what you get included, it's absolutely fantastic. This is essentially what it is. So they do various different coolers. So you've got the Rafe, the Rafe Spire, the Rafe Max, and it just does what it's meant to do. So as you can see, it's a pretty low profile cooler. It's got a nice, easy to use kind of mounting uh, mechanism. And uh, we're gonna look to install that on there. And as you can see, thermal paste already applied uh, in terms of the thermal pad. So let's get straight into putting the cooler on there. So the first thing you're gonna notice with the CPU cooler is the way that it actually mounts. Now, as I said, there are various different mounting mechanisms out there. The one that actually comes supplied with the board has these two little lugs, one here and one over here. As you can see on this cooler, there's nowhere for that to actually go. Instead, it has these little screw down points. So what we've essentially got to do is take these retention brackets off. So my Phillips size zero isn't gonna cut it, so let's go with the Phillips size one. Then it's just a matter of unscrewing these retention brackets. Obviously, you're gonna to wanna to keep them handy, so put them in the motherboard box with the screws or wherever, you know, it's gonna be a safe place. Don't do like I do and put it, you know, in what they say, a safe place, safe place. One place that's so safe that you actually forget where it is and yeah, the amount of times I've done that before. So again, just take off the other retention bracket by undoing the screws, like so. And like I said, put it in a, a safe place. So you can put it in the motherboard box, you can put it in the cooler box. It's entirely up to you, just remember where you put it. Now, once we've done that, we can actually look at mounting the cooler. So, cooler-wise, if you are on a different type of system, you're gonna notice that some of the screws are laid out a little bit differently. On this one, it's you know exactly the same. So it's really down to you kind of which way you mount the cooler. You can either have it this way or this way. As you can see from here, it is kind of more of a, a rectangular shape. So you can't actually mount it this way because the screws just aren't gonna line up. So either that way or that way. Again, check clearance issues with your memory and things like that. Personally, I'm gonna go with this way. And what you wanna do is just make sure that you put it down and then we're gonna screw it in kind of very evenly. So you can see the screws themselves are gonna line up like so. And then we can actually look to start screwing them down. And they are spring loaded, so you will hear a bit of noise. Once you've got one down, you then wanna to go to the opposite corner, just so we're getting the even tension. And again, when that one starts biting a little bit, go to the furthest one away and start getting that one to bite as well. And then again, opposite one, and just basically go in that order. Once you have everything biting, you can continue to tighten it down fully. And there we go, we can see that one is not going anywhere. So back to the opposite. And again, it's not going anywhere. The furthest one away from that one. Not going anywhere. And then the last one. And there we go, we have our cooler on. Now, most people would just simply take this and put it onto the fan header here, which is fine. But then you are gonna have kind of this just sort of hanging there. I like to sort of see if there's any way of maybe cable routing it. Can I get it around this way? Which I can't. Generally, if you had kind of a higher end board, you'd have some heat sinks up here. So maybe you could kind of route it round places. I mean, we still might be able to do something. If we can tuck this in here. This is just me kind of being a bit, I don't know, not pedantic, but I just like things to look as nice as physically possible. So I'm gonna put that on there and just see if there's anywhere where we can, there we go. See, I think that personally looks a lot better than just kind of having it looped and hanging there. But obviously it's all down to personal preference. So for me, you know, this is looking to be kind of the start of a, a pretty nice looking build now. 
So next step is going to be our memory. As I said, we've got the ADATA XPG DDR4-2400. You can obviously get slower or faster memory depending on your, I guess your budget is going to be the, the key thing, but making sure that obviously it is compatible with your motherboard, so in terms of using DDR4 and so forth. So some motherboards will have two slots, some will have four, some will even have eight depending on if you're on the X299 or X399 platform. With this, we have two slots. Essentially, we've run tests, other people have run tests. There isn't really any difference between putting this in slot one or slot two. Some people will argue that there is, but there really isn't. If you're on four slot, then you wanna be going and you have two modules, you're gonna want slots two and four instead of one and three. Again, very negligible difference. You will see on the actual memory module itself that it has a little notch. The notch itself is slightly off center, as you can see. So if you were to try and put that in like that, you can see that it just simply wouldn't go. You have a little latch on here, Another way to remember actually is the little sticky label on the memory module generally faces the CPU. So we can put it there and then you can see if we line this up like that, you can see that the notch lines up and then simply push it in. You can do that side, then that side or together it's entirely up to you. As you can see, that is now sitting in there comfortably. Next step for us, now that we've got the memory in there, the APU with the cooler and the M.2 SSD is to stop putting it into the chassis. So let's get to that. So we've had a bit of a clear up, um, kind of, you know, have to get a little bit more organized. So we've taken everything off the desk that we don't need, all the boxes and packaging for the stuff that we've already installed onto the motherboard. Now we can actually look at putting the motherboard in. And the first thing you want to do is be grabbing your um, IO shield plate and actually installing that in there. So there's little clips just sort of along the side and it should fit nice and snugly. Now, the way to actually figure out which kind of way it goes up is you can just line it up with your motherboard like this, and you can see that when it's going to be sitting in the in the chassis itself, the board is going to be upright. So the audio generally is going to be down the bottom. So here's our audio ports. We can just look at pushing that into here. And just getting it into place like so. And as you can see, the IO panel just fits in there nicely. That way we're now ready to put our motherboard inside the chassis. So just double checking that it's all in and all sitting flush. What we want to do is actually take all of these cables and see if we can route them somewhere because it is going to help us a lot with kind of cable management later on. So if we can get them down here, see it looks like that hole's actually even made for it so we should be able to just pull all of our cables through because we aren't going to be using a five and a quarter inch drive like a optical drive dvd rewrite or anything like that so we can actually get away with kind of using that space to our advantage for cable management so we can pull everything through and then we can get to all that in a little bit once the motherboard's in there. Now, one thing AeroCool have actually done is, is quite nice of them, especially for um, a kind of cheaper chassis like this. They have taken this expansion slot out, but they have actually provided it uh, in the bag of goodies. Now, a lot of people, they use snap-on and off covers, um, which kind of defeats the object because once you have a hole there, you have a hole there. We're not gonna be using a GPU, so we don't want a hole here because it's just aesthetically not gonna look that nice. So we're actually gonna to look to, uh, to put that on. As you can see, the ones below it are the snap-off ones, which is a bit frustrating, but generally with a cheaper chassis like this, that's the sort of thing that you're gonna find. So we can get all of our relevant screws and everything out, ready to go. And we're gonna be looking at potentially trying to find a screw that's gonna be perfect for mounting that onto there. So if we take all these ones out, I know that we're gonna need four of these for our power supply, but if there's another one, which there is, then we can use that to actually install this bracket on there. So essentially, I feel like I'm kind of rebuilding the chassis for aero for a little bit, which is a bit frustrating because uh, I don't know why. Uh, okay, I actually have to take a bracket off here. You have to, uh, excuse me guys, this is the first time that I've ever built with this chassis. But we have to take off this kind of security bracket. Um, but yeah, I don't know why Aeropool couldn't have actually installed that on there for us in the first place and allowed you to take it off as opposed to it being taken off and you having to put it back on. Doesn't really make sense, but there you go. So if we take that off, 
we can now look at installing this and actually screwing it into, into place. Okay, it's not a very clever design, I've got to admit. Generally, that would go like that, but that doesn't actually make any sense. So, looks like it's just going to kind of be held in from this end, but not from the other end. Um, not not a, a major problem. At the end of the day, this is a £30 chassis, so I wasn't expecting miracles, but maybe just a little bit of an oversight. Obviously, I'm not reviewing this as a chassis, so... I can't really comment too much, but obviously a lot of this is gonna come down to, I guess, pricing and how much you're willing to pay for certain things. If you wanna pay a little bit more for a chassis, obviously you're gonna get a few better features and things like that. We wanted to pay the very bare minimum to make this rig kind of, you know, uh, an affordable system. So we can screw that into place. Like I say, it's little things like this that actually do frustrate me. The fact that I kind of had to do this, and I mean, even then it's, it's not great, but you get what you pay for, you really, really do. So we can then proceed to install this security bracket back into place. So it's just a little bit of an annoyance more than anything, the fact that we've had to do this. So we can screw that back on. And then we can actually look at installing our motherboard. Like I say guys, this might not actually annoy you. You might be one of them people who don't really, you know, care too much about aesthetics. Essentially, you know, it has got a very small window on the side, so you're probably not gonna notice these things. But to me, I'm all about the looks, so. Right, what we wanna do then is actually take our motherboard and just kind of offer it up to the chassis. So, if we offer it up to the chassis, like so, we can see if we actually need to install any standoffs. So we've obviously got our one here and our one over here, so they're absolutely fine. And then looking at the motherboard, you can see on there that we have another standoff hole just here, another standoff hole over here, and then another one down there and one there. So we can see that we've got these two, got them two, and we've got another two down there, but they are gonna be the ones for a full size ATX. So we just need to kind of line things up, measure up, and just see if there's any other ones that we need which there is. So, depending on obviously if you're using ATX or micro ATX, um, will depend on whether you need this one uh, and this one. Because yeah, this chassis is a little bit different. It actually has a power supply at the top and not at the bottom. So, what we want to do is grab two standoffs and just put it into the holes that we know that we're going to need. Now, some chassis manufacturers are actually going to give you what they call a nut setter. Sadly, this one doesn't have one. So you can either screw it in by hand, which sometimes is achievable, sometimes isn't. Or you can go and grab a nut setter, which I'm gonna do right about now. So like I say, the kind of key to building anything is to be organized. As you can see, I've got one of these. I will link to it in the description below. You can grab it from Amazon, uh, but it just kind of keeps things nice and organized for me. And within there, I have a handy little tool that some of the uh, manufacturers of chassis out there will supply you with. Some don't, but essentially it's a nut setter. So you've got a Phillips or Posi drive on one side and then a little socket on the other. It's just a matter of putting it onto your screwdriver, over the top of one of the standoffs. And then you can screw it down, like so. So yeah, we needed all of that for one whole standoff, which is a bit frustrating, but what can you do? Now we can actually look at uh, putting our motherboard into the chassis. So the easiest way for me to do this might actually be to turn this on its side, just so you guys can see. Uh, some people like to sort of prefer building it upright. I quite like doing it on its side because it allows you to kind of line things up and gravity is not gonna be an issue and so forth. Um, obviously I shouldn't have really picked it up like that. So used to doing it now that I know it's not gonna be a problem, but generally two hands. Yeah, depends how technical you wanna go with it. So you can then, proceed to kind of, I'm actually going to uncable tie this just so it's not in my way, but you can then proceed to actually install the motherboard into the chassis. So lining it up with the rear IO, which is always fun because it does have little tabs and bits and bobs on it that like to get in the way. As we can see now with the HDMI. Oh, 
but yeah, we're pretty much good to go. And then you will see the kind of the screw holes and everything line up quite nicely. So then we can look at getting our screws and installing it into place. So I always like to sort of, you know, go corner to corner as always, just so I know that everything's going in evenly. So once we have that one in, we can then sort of look at repositioning the board a little bit and getting the one in up there. Really does help if you have a magnetic screwdriver, which generally I do, but I decided to go with the one that wasn't. So yeah, clever me. So now we have that one in, again we want to go kind of opposite, so we could go down into this corner. And you'll feel as soon as you get the resistance, you don't want to over tighten it or anything like that. We can then go up to this opposite corner up here. I'm going to apologize again now guys, you know, this video isn't going to be a short one. It is going to be fairly long, but it's the only way to sort of show you step by step as to essentially what we're doing. So after that one, we can have a look, we've got a one, two, three, one, two, so one more. Uh, obviously on an ATX motherboard, there will be a few more screw holes, but on this one, are pretty much done. So there we go. So now that we've actually got the chassis kind of, you know, built up like this, we can actually focus on all of them cables that we took through earlier. And this is kind of where I guess the first stage of cable management starts. Now, I'm not going to go overboard with the cable management because it's just not that type of video. This is more about just building an affordable gaming system. So HD audio is the first one that I generally do just purely because the HD audio pins are normally over in this corner. As you can see, HD audio, HD audio. And you will see on there that there's two rows of pins and one of them has actually got a blocked out pin on it. Exactly the same on the header that you'll see over here. So it's just a matter of simply lining it up and it can only go in one way and pulling it back through as taunt as possible. It's gonna be exactly the same with the USB. So USB header has a similar kind of design where it has a blocked off pin uh, on the header and then you can see over here where we have USB 3 and 4 there's a blocked off pin. So it's just a matter again of lining it up and it will only go in one way. Above that is the USB 3 header because this chassis has got a USB 3 port. The actual cable for that is slightly different, you can't really go wrong, it will only ever go in one way because it has a little notch. Put that in and again we can take back the cable and just take some of the slack because this is the side that people want to see. This is the bit where you want to sort of make it look as nice as physically possible. So the only other cables that we have for the front panel are going to be what we call the front panel header cables. So this is going to be all of the things to control your power switch. We've got a reset switch. We've also got power LED plus and minus and then hard drive LED as well. So on this particular motherboard, you can see that all of these pins are here. It's called panel one and you can actually see it has little markings for plus LED, plus uh, hard drive LED, uh, plus power button and plus reset. So we're gonna take all of these in through here and then we can actually look at connecting those all up. So I am gonna to have to turn things slightly just so I can see, but we can see down the bottom we have reset. So we're gonna go with the reset one first. So we have here, reset, and then uh, on the back, you will see there's a little arrow. The arrow actually denotes where the positive is. So on this one, we're gonna wanna go that way up. And again, we can sort of pull that through and get rid of all the slack. The next one along the bottom is the hard drive LED. So for that one, we've got plus on the left-hand side. This one is actually labeled plus and minus. So again, we want the plus on the left-hand side, turn it over, and we can put it on that one. Above them, we have the power button on the right hand side. And on that one, a plus is on the left. So for us, we want it to face that way. A lot of our sort of higher end motherboards, you will find come with a little connector. So MSI have them, I know, um, I think Azrock have them. Azus have them, they call them Q-Connect, where you can kind of fit these all to a little connector and then just plonk them on there. 
And then our last one is gonna be power LED. And again, this one's actually split. So we want the plus on this side and the minus on negative. So positive and negative like that. We can then feed these cables back through and I think that looks pretty neat and tidy. The only other cable that we've really got to deal with on this kind of side of the chassis is the one for the fan. So the annoying thing is with this is it has a Molex on there as well. You have two choices. If you want and you don't plan on using Molex, you could just kind of let it dangle there or you could actually pull this off or pull this off and actually get rid of it. I'm not a massive fan of Molex, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. What you might actually be able to do is to feed this through like so. And then we have a little channel fan down the bottom. Just trying to sort of be smart with the build and try and make it sort of work to our advantage. But we can put that like that and just kind of have it like that. I think that's about as neat and tidy as we're gonna get that. On the front, there's a couple of fans as well. So uh, we can look into taking this out. The camera's probably not gonna see it that well at the moment, purely because it has a cable tie on it. But if I can undo the cable tie, then I'll be able to kind of wrestle the cable out. And again, we have the three pin fan header with a Molex. And then this particular chassis actually has two pre-installed fans in the front. So we need to sort of see if there are, firstly, two fan headers on the motherboard. If there isn't, then we may have to look at plugging them in via Molex, which sometimes that's gonna be the limitation of using a, uh, a micro ATX board compared to an ATX board. ATX is generally gonna have more fan headers on it. Uh, Mini ITX is only gonna have maybe two, micro ATX is only gonna have sort of four, um, three or four. So we can actually feed these through the other side and we can deal with that in due course. But it looks, because the only other fan header I can see on here, obviously we've got one for our CPU cooler, we've got a system fan one here. There's one here which is in the most awkward place ever, which I don't really want to use for aesthetic reasons. Other than that, none up here, so we've got no others. So I'd rather probably just install that in a Molex uh, sort of capacity as opposed to installing it on the board. Uh, but we can control all this and you know make sure that it's not too loud and, and things like that. But essentially, this is kind of the bulk of our, our build. Um, the only other things that we've really got to do is fit the power supply and fit the hard drive. So let's get to that. So hard drive wise, um, there's a few different places you can actually install the hard drive into there. Um, and basically based on your chassis, you wanna be checking the instructions as to where you think is gonna be the best place for it to go. For me, if I can actually bring my cameraman over and view in here, you can see that we have kind of this cage just down here to put it in. So essentially what I'm gonna do is take the hard drive and I'm probably gonna go in the lowest one purely because I find it just that little bit easier for sort of cable management. Once we've got it in there, we can get the appropriate screws and start actually securing it into place. So there's one screw and another screw. And if we grab one more screw, there should, I'm guessing, on the other side, if we turn it around, uh, you can just see through there, there's a little screw hole, uh, just to secure it from the other side. Not completely necessary, but obviously if it's there, you should really make use of it. So there we go. Um, that is pretty much our build, almost, and I say almost, complete. Uh, obviously the only other thing that we really have to do is connect up a SATA cable into the hard drive, uh, fit our power supply, and then uh, we're good to go. So SATA cable can only go one way purely because it has a little kind of L shape on it. Uh, generally if it has a clip on it, the little metal clip goes upwards and we can push it in like that. Then we can look at sort of cable routing it out as best as we can, just trying to keep things neat and tidy. Obviously you don't want to put too much flex onto it. But we can then bring it back in here and either put it into the sort of right angled ones or into one of these. Now I think that looks a bit neat and tidy compared to having it just go from there to there and the cable kind of rooted around here a little bit. So power supply wise. So we've got a 400 watt uh, AeroCool integrator. So thank you to AeroCool for supplying that as well as the chassis. You know what, thank you to everyone who supplied everything. AMD for supplying the uh, APU, ASRock with the motherboard, um, ADATA for the SSD and the memory and everything as well. 
So power supply wise, obviously budget dependent will depend on sort of where you can go with it. Generally, they do come with the screws, but uh, we've got some screws here anyway. And then uh, a power plug, depending on what country you're in. We're in the UK, so obviously we've got a UK one, European, US, and so forth. So this is a 400 watt uh, power supply. Depending on your budget, you may be able to get a modular power supply, which means, uh, or even semi-modular, which means that the 24 pin and the eight pin or four pin will generally be connected. All the other ones will be modular cables. Uh, if it's fully modular, then the whole power supply will be essentially fully modular. You don't have to plug any unnecessarily unnecessary cables that you don't need in. Uh, but because of obviously price point and things like that, this one was as affordable. Siri trying to interrupt. Uh, this one was basically as affordable as you can physically get. So you're not gonna have any fancy braiding on the cables. Obviously we have on the 24 pin, which is nice to see. Uh, but other than that, it's gonna be a fairly simple unit. So we can look at actually installing this into our chassis. So once again, the instructions, uh, if I can show you on here, will show you exactly how a power supply should go in. They're not very good instructions. Hopefully this video is helping you a little bit more but we can actually look at putting it in there. Generally, chassis will have um, the power supply at the bottom, but this is a slightly older chassis and it is a slightly kind of cheaper chassis. So uh, it's actually gonna go in at the top. It might be a little bit fiddly to get in at first, but once it's all lined up, you will see the various different screw holes here, 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 and up here should line up sort of, you know, fairly kind of evenly, I guess. Uh, as you start screwing it in, they will just kind of fall into place. So, if we go with the first one. Obviously, depending on your chassis, you may have thumb screws for this. Uh, it would have been nice if we did have any. Obviously, the side panels having thumb screws was a, a nice little addition, but it all adds to cost. And when you're looking at a 30 pound chassis, it's not something that you're necessarily gonna get. Like I say, price was kind of paramount when we were specking this system up. So I wasn't expecting miracles, but to be honest, this has been a fairly easy chassis to work with, in all honesty. So we can put the last one in, and then we can work on all of our cables, exactly where they're gonna go and so forth. So when you have a power supply like this, it just doesn't look very nice all laid out like this. So what we're actually going to do is the 24 pin is always the biggest. So we're actually gonna feed that through the back. Obviously AeroCall sort of thought about this, taking this through with this uh, sort of cable management hole just up here. And then we're gonna take the rest of the cables and do exactly the same. There we go. So now you can see from that side, once again, it looks a lot, lot cleaner. So now we can actually look at sort of doing our cable management, plugging in the cables as to where they need to go and so forth. So 24 pin, you can see that we have just here. So we can see if it's, okay, it's not gonna fit through that one. So we're gonna have to come through this one, just purely because the motherboard is kind of in the way to a certain degree. So we can look at putting this in. There is a little lip just on this connector here. So uh, we can actually look to obviously match that up. And that, is in. So now that we have that in, we can focus on our next most important connector, which is just up here. So hopefully the camera can get into here. It's just a little four pin. Some boards will have a four pin, some will have an eight pin. On this particular one, it is a four pin. So we're gonna look on all of the power supply cables that we have and try and find our four pin. Now, as I said, sometimes it will be an eight pin, but it doesn't necessarily mean it is an eight pin. So this is what we're actually talking about, but on this particular one, it splits. So we can simply poke this through as a four, because it doesn't make sense having a four pin cable and an eight pin cable when you can just get away with doing it on the one cable. And then we can look at putting this on there, which isn't the easiest thing to do, I will admit. We'll rip that back through. Haven't actually given us much room to kind of fit it through. Might actually be easier just coming back through this one. 
and putting it through like that. I think that's going to be the easiest option on this, just because we haven't really got much clearance here. It doesn't look the neatest or the tidiest, but it's about all I can do while I'm trying to do this at a kind of time frame and trying to keep everything going. So on this power supply, we also have a PCI Express connector, but we don't need it because we have no graphics card. It's built into the CPU or the APU, should I say. We also have some Molexes, which obviously we're going to use in conjunction with them front fan connectors. So we can essentially plug all that in together and then we can look at cable tidy and stuff up. And then the only other connector that we need to worry about is the SATA connector for our hard drive. So we can look at potentially poking a cable in down here, bringing it round. And trying to get that plugged in next to the data cable. Like so. Now, I don't want to blow my own trumpet, but I think that looks pretty much as neat and as tidy as you're physically ever going to get it. We've got everything plugged in that we need to. Obviously the other side is not looking exactly great right now, but that's something that I'm going to work on cable management wise now. Um, and then yeah, we'll come back and see exactly how everything looks. So off camera, uh, I did a bit of cable management. It's not the greatest, I will show you, um, purely because this isn't, I guess, the, the easiest chassis to work with when it comes to cable management. There's nowhere to really hide things. So I've just kind of had to tuck it all down here in the unused um, drive bays. But overall, the main part of the system, which is what you want to see, to me, looks absolutely fine. Uh, there's nothing kind of, you know, amazing to say in regards to kind of hiding the cables or anything like that. But this is going to do exactly what you want it to do. And it's a good starting point, I think, for anyone. So essentially what I'm going to now do is put the side panels on and then we can, uh, we can look at turning the system on and uh, I guess leave you with some nice sexy shots of the machine. And we're also pit it kind of next to the other machine that we're doing based around 1080p gaming for around 500 pounds. And you can sort of see exactly what you can get for your money. So let's get the side panels on. So the easiest way to put this side panel on, because we haven't actually got much room to work with, is going to be to lay it down on this side. But Eric will have kind of thought this through in the fact that they have this raised area as well. So you should be able to kind of position things in such a way that you wouldn't even know. Then we can go back to our trusty little cup, which had all of our thumb screws in there and start essentially putting the chassis back together. So first two on this side. And then we can look at putting on the windowed side before we actually power the system on. System on. Now, purposely, in the whole kind of pricing up of this system, we never actually priced up an operating system, purely because some people like Windows 10, some people don't, some people may even want to install Linux on it. I really don't know. But if you do want to buy a Windows 10, there's plenty of places to, uh, to buy it. Now for the sexy bit. Let's see if we can actually get this peeled off, shall we? Okay, it didn't work exactly like I hoped. I was trying to make that all sexy and everything, but it kind of came off in pieces. Never mind. Let's try the other side, shall we? Okay, that was a lot better. Now, I know you guys love that, hence why I actually decided to do it. But now we can look at putting this on. And uh, the joy of it as well is the fact that we left that kind of sticky stuff on there is we have no fingerprints, we have no scratches, it's literally ready to go once we put that side panel on put the thumb screws back in and there we go so now if i grab my kettle lead and fingers crossed We have one fully fledged system up and running. 
Now what we're actually gonna do is we are gonna do some more content based around this system because like I said to you guys, you're gonna be able to build a 720p gaming system that will play playable frame rates for under 400 pound. It would be a bit unfair if I just built it and said, take my word for it, believe me. So we're gonna have another video, we're gonna run some benchmarks on this, show you guys exactly what it can do, and then you can sort of, you know, leave the decisions up to yourself. You may wanna tweak the build a little bit, change it a little bit, maybe go for a slightly bigger hard drive and not an NVMe SSD and just go for a conventional SSD. Maybe there's one on offer. But this is just a simple kind of scenario of how things are without buying a graphics card, running a fully fledged gaming system for under 400 pounds. Let's leave you with some glam shots of exactly how this looks. And then, uh, like I say, we can put it up against the 1080p system that we've got just over there. And you can see kind of, you know, how it compares. Hopefully you enjoyed it guys. Until next time, see you later.